Hey everyone, I wanted to share this cool project that I put together this summer. It's a solar powered boat. Now it's not one of those fancy yachts that you've seen before. This is the most basic solar powered thing you can imagine. This little boat has been an absolute blast to have on the lake this summer because it's completely silent, maintenance free, and surprisingly comfortable. I started this build so my kids could go out by themselves to visit friends or just hang out, but it's been so much fun puttering around on this thing. In this video, I'll show you how you can put one together yourself in less than an hour, and it's surprisingly affordable. Let's get into it. For parts, all you need is an electric trolling motor, a 100 watt flexible solar panel, a basic solar charge controller, a 100 amp hour lithium battery, and a battery box to keep everything out of the weather. I had all this stuff in my shed, except I needed to buy a small boat for the project. I ended up choosing this Briss 9.8 foot inflatable boat for $970 on Amazon. It has a beefy PVC construction with heat welded seams and is surprisingly well built and comfortable. I went with the inflatable floor model. They also offer an aluminum deck version. It has two extruded aluminum bench seats that can squeeze up to four adults and 1,100 pounds. There's grab ropes on the side and it includes a pair of oars with locks in case you run out of juice, but luckily I've never needed to use them. I already had this Minn Kota Endura C2 trolling motor from an earlier project and it's very affordable at $150 new and for as little as $50 used. It has 40 pounds of thrust that's equivalent to roughly a half of a horsepower and a twist throttle with six forward and three reverse speeds. To power this, I'm using a 100 amp hour expert power LFP battery that I reviewed earlier. The trolling motor pulls up to 42 amps and this can output up to 100 amps, so it's really not working too hard. It costs $500, but you can pick up budget brands like Rodoto or Power Queen for around 300 bucks and some are as low as $200 now. To keep it charged, I had this random solar charge controller from TP Solar, so I figured I'd use it. This is a super basic model with a less efficient PWM charger, but it worked like a champ all summer, so I don't think you need anything super fancy for this project. I found this 10 amp solar charge controller that's only $34 on Amazon. It has MC4 connectors and a more efficient MPPT solar charge controller, so I'd go with something like that. To keep the battery and solar charge controller out of the weather, I use this old Minn Kota battery box. It costs $75, but has some nice features like a 60 amp circuit breaker, 12 volt output, and power meter, although that's probably only accurate for lead acid batteries. You can get a bare bones battery box like this Noco for less than 20 bucks if you want to save money. For the solar panel, I'm using this TP Solar 100 watt flexible panel that I already owned. They don't make this one anymore, but pretty much any 100 watt flexible panel will work fine for this. Or you get two 50 watt panels and place them on either side of the engine. I'll link up a few flexible panels in the description like this 100 watt flexible panel with rugged ETFE surface and efficient 9BB cells that's only $80 and looks like a good choice. Assembling the system takes just a few minutes and only needs one tool. First, drop the battery into the battery box. On the lid, there are heavy duty positive and negative wires with ring terminals to connect it to the battery. We also need to connect the solar charge controller to the battery to recharge it. That's done by connecting the red and black output wires to the battery terminals. Since both wires are fairly short, you need to do this part carefully, but it's as simple as removing the terminal bolt, sliding on the ring terminals for the battery box and charge controller, threading the terminal back in and tightening it down with 13 millimeter socket. Once both the positive and negatives are connected, we just need to tidy the wires and we're done. I've placed the MC4 wires as close to the edge as possible so I can reach them when the lid is on. Attaching the trolling motor to the boat is as simple as sliding the bracket over the transom and using the two large bolts to tighten it down. This only weighs 20 pounds, so it's very easy to maneuver. Next, carefully place the battery box in the back of the boat and secure it with the straps by running them over the lid and tightening them down by pulling the strap. To connect the trolling motor to the battery box, you just have to slide the wires into the terminals and tighten them down. You can see how old the box is from the condition of these terminals, but it still works fine. So at this point, everything should be working and we can actually turn the throttle and the boat is moving. The last thing to do is lay the 100 watt solar panel on the back of the boat and snap the MC4 connectors together. 
I didn't do anything to attach the panel because it seemed to stay put by itself, even in the wind. It was also nice to be able to move it around and take it out of the boat really easily. You can use bungee or zip ties in the corners to lash it down for extra security. I usually leave the panel sitting across the back bench and rotate it to the side when I'm driving. But if we have a full boat, we can quickly disconnect it and leave it on shore. To make the seats more comfortable, I bought one inch thick yoga mat and cut it into planks that fit the seats. And it's so much more comfortable. It only costs $38 and I actually get four seats out of it. So I have another set for next season. To make this safer to drive at dusk, I picked up a set of battery powered navigation lights. I strapped the red and green lights onto the ropes in front and attached a white one to the top of the motor. It's a bit low, but I'm on a small pond, so it's good enough for my needs. Now these are really inexpensive lights and I did notice at the end of the summer that one of the clear ones had already sprung a leak. You get what you pay for. When it rains, the boat has a bilge area under the floor so the deck is always nice and dry. To pump it out, I highly recommend picking up a battery powered transfer pump. I wish I had bought this one years ago. I got this model from D-Way for $36 and it works great. After a rainstorm, you can easily have 10 to 15 gallons of water to pump out and this will move 2.3 gallons a minute. Just place it in the bilge, flip the switch and take it easy. So how well does it work? Well, it's pretty great as long as you temper your expectations. This is perfect for puttering around our small pond and is basically dead quiet. It's no speed demon though. On the highest thrust level of five, it moves along at around three to four miles an hour, which is more than enough to get from point A to B, but it's not so great for tubing. The best part is once I set this up in early summer, the solar panel kept the battery fully charged, no matter how much we used the boat or how cloudy the weather was. Some days we'd easily put on three to six miles at full speed and the battery never dropped below full bars. So this is 100% maintenance free and didn't cost a penny to run all summer. I made this for my teenage kids and for that purpose, it's been a home run. They love the independence of being able to visit their friends, go fishing, cruise around and listen to music and check out wildlife. The boat is super safe and easy to drive. So I'm not worried they'll get into too much trouble. I've been surprised that I've gone out for sunset cruises on the boat with my wife, and it's been perfect for that. I have a larger 16 foot boat with a gas outboard, but I really like how quiet this is and there's no stinky fumes. It's also really easy to dock at our friends' houses, even if they have lots of rocks out front. This entire build took less than an hour to put together, so it's super fast and easy. I only paid for the boat, so this build only cost me $970, but all in this costs around $1,800. If you go with a used boat and motor and a cheaper battery and battery box, you can probably pull this together for less than $1,000. That's really inexpensive for a powered boat with zero maintenance costs. We've had a blast with this little boat this summer, and it's definitely been a great investment for my family. Hopefully this will inspire you to put together your own little solar powered boat because that's something anyone can do. I've linked to a bunch of recommended products in the description to make it easy to put this together. All right, everyone, till next time.